Welcome to the first live reaction of the spring 2019 season. Today we're taking a look at Demon Slayer, aka Kimetsu no Yaiba, um, based on a very popular manga. Episode 1 came out today. Um, and expect more of these live reactions as we go on because the spring season is just starting. And I don't really know what show I'm going to follow yet, so I'm just going to try out all the shows. Um, some shows I don't even know where to watch at the moment, but let's get started with uh, Demon Slayer, shall we? Uh, is that 3D snow? That's not a good sign. Man, this character design is amazing. It's really good. <laughs> oh, CGI snow. His face is super expressive. I'm guessing that's his sister. Clearly, they're going to use a lot of CGI in this series. Um, so far, it looks pretty sketchy, but the character animation is really good. So I don't know why they're going CGI. Oh, it's a CGI show. And in shots, it looks really good. In some shots, it looks really good. Like right here, you can't really tell. And the shadows in her clothes are like... Uh, done using a lighting engine I'm assuming and they look really good they don't look better than 2d animation because they've gotten so well at uh, so good at drawing clothes that it's basically second nature to them at this point but I do think it's a creative way to do it the only problem is when characters start moving in the distance like when that first shot of him um, putting his backpack on from a distance looked pretty bad but I'm guessing they're doing this so they can have more dynamic fight scenes so we'll see that later on in the series I'm assuming for some reason, his face is not as expressive as hers. Like, you saw her eyes squint when she said that, which is good character animation, like facial, but his didn't move at all when he was talking, and just his mouth flapped, which we couldn't see because of the towel. I'm really interested in how they're using this technology in this show. Let's take a look at all their faces for a second. Uh, Ufotable is the one doing the show, and this is not their usual art style at all. Um, if you've seen Fate, Stay Night, Fate Zero, any of those shows, that's more reminiscent of what they usually do. Um, this, this, the character designs in this show remind me more of Haikyuu and, like, uh, Ballroom, Welcome to the Ballroom show, with those, like, humongous eyes, and all, all three of the children have the same eyes, which is cool to see, that's like a small detail that you can pick up, but, um, so far it looks like they are very much following the art style of the manga, which is great, so let's see how that develops. He's leaving the house, let's see what he ends up getting up to. How many... Siblings does he have? So this is the sister he was carrying at the very beginning of the show on his back and she was bleeding. Like in this shot, his movement in this shot is not bad. I guess if he's moving in a single plane, it, it doesn't move that, it doesn't uh, cause that kind of like parallax issue that we saw at the beginning. But when he's like turning or if there's some kind of thing where the, the shadows are changing or something like that, it, it puts you out of the moment for a little bit. But overall, I think the art style is pretty good. And the animation is good, too. Here we have the inciting incident. Let's go. So there are power cables. So this is like early 1900s. So it's like similar to the time period that we saw in Golden Kamui. I wonder if there's going to be guns in this. Like, look, look at him walking right here. I'm going to play it for a little bit. When he walks, look at his legs. That's like, there's no cloth shadows on his legs, but there are on his upper body. Which I guess is what they want you to look at. But when you look at his legs, it just looks... Very strange to me. We'll see. I think overall they did it quite well. I think I don't think we're at that level of technology yet where you can just do this um, technology and have it look exactly like 2D. But I do think we're going to get there eventually. Maybe. I don't know. His eyes didn't move at all when he said that. He makes no facial expressions. Which is a, like an odd choice for the main character not to move his face at all when he talks. Just his mouth. It's kind of weird. In that shot his legs looked fine. Which is strange. I think the more shadows there are, the more like 2D animation it looks. Or it might be that they use 2D animation in certain cuts and only in certain cuts they use 3D. Like if you look at the snow in this shot, that snow is 3D, right? And the house looks like it is 3D too, but the dude in the house doesn't. So I feel like they're using 3D backgrounds, but at some points he looks 3D as well. Which is kind of weird as well. I don't know. So we have a nice mix of like historical Japan, which is always a great setting and one that I feel is underused in anime. Um, it's interesting just because Japan was so different from the rest of the world at this time period and they're incorporating mythology into it. So this is already my jam, like setting wise. This is an interesting way to do exposition, by the way, because we don't know about the demons in this world. So they're telling us, but he's doing it like he's asking himself, which is nice. Um, it can get a little bit uh, too much if he talks for like five minutes. So we'll see. I hope it's short. Really good music right here. We're already told that demons don't just live outside, they can come in too. Interesting to see that in town they had power cables, but he still uses like 
lanterns and candles and stuff. Is that foreshadowing about his brothers and sisters? The still frames in the show are really good. I think just when it moves, it kind of gives a little bit of Uncanny Valley effect. When he walked right here. Oh boy. When he when he's walking in this frame, it's fine. But when he walks... Watch his walking animation right here. It looks strange to me. Um, I think it's pretty inventive the way they're combining the two. Like right here, his boots look normal. And right here, he's back to his like plain Unreal Engine like uh, stock type walking animation. But this background looks real, like 2D. His sense of smell reminds me of Asir Pasan from Golden Kamui as well. She's like close to nature. That's what they're trying to convey with the sense of smell. I didn't think this series was going to go this dark. This is super dark. We're in the first episode, by the way. Not even seven, eight minutes in. His whole family got massacred. Holy moly. Okay, now we're at the beginning of the episode. Oh boy. But the bear would have eaten the bodies, right? It's definitely not a bear. I got bad news for you, bro. It's probably a demon. This this says a lot about his character right here. Imagine walking into your house finding your whole family dead, and he doesn't even like he doesn't even like fall on his feet and like not move for a second. If it was me, I would just like pass out or something. He picks up his sisters like he's a he's clearly like a person of action. This is what that we learned from this. Oh snap. She's possessed by a demon? Oh god. Well, dude, it's weird that she's standing up in the first place. Oh my Pretty resourceful use of that axe right there. What do you even do in this case? Do you exercise the demon? This is a twist I was not expecting. She could use her nails to rip out his throat right here, but... What is he gonna do? Oh my god, don't tell me he's gonna do that. Is he? I don't know. This is super intense. Oh, someone's coming, someone's coming. Please don't kill his sister, that's not cool. His words got through to her. Oh, that's great. Oh, please, demon hunter person, don't, don't kill her, please. She's fine. This is why they were using 3D animation, that camera movement. Okay. Clearly there are superpowers in this world. That guy just unleashed a typhoon with his sword. Telling you, saying you smelled someone you haven't smelled before isn't really the most convincing argument. So I don't expect him to believe you. Oh, is that how it works? Oh, boy. Okay, so they established that right off the bat, that she's not turning back. She's really all he has left. You probably shouldn't kill her. Oh, no. Oh, no, 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 no. Don't, don't do it in front of him. Are you serious? Dude, look at this guy. He's lost everything. You can't do this to him. He gets so triggered by him getting down on uh, his knees that he just leaves it alone. He did take initiative. He's brought her from her, from her house, dude. What are you talking about? He's one of those people. He's one of those powers, you know, might is right type people. I'm glad you're just laying out your life philosophy like this. He's trying to inspire like some kind of action in him. But he already took action. He's just a little too young for this. This is this transformative event where he changes from what he was into what he will be. Or what he's trying to be over the series. So really he's ashamed of himself for not performing his duties. And he's like taking it out halfway on Tanjiro. It's good that they're telling us this, because otherwise I would have just thought he was a complete dick. And stabs her in the heart. Now that he's been told to fight, he fights. Music is sick, by the way. It's like this folk-infused, like, pop. It's pretty cool. Is her hair soaked in blood at the end? I feel like there's still some of her left in there. They're gonna flash back it, so I'm just, let's, let's, let's watch the replay, shall we? So at least we're establishing that he's smart in fighting. He's not going to beat people through pure power, which is what this guy has. He's going to beat them through resourcefulness and like utilizing his tools and knowledge of the environment, which is cool. That's way more interesting than just punching people in the face. Is she just going to growl for the rest of the series? I hope she talks at some point. So he sees her actions as not protecting him, but like eating this guy with the sword. Oh, here we go. Yeah, so he sees the difference. Okay. This is like the Piccolo karate chop, dude. He always karate chopped Gohan to, like, knock him out. Come on. So it's like the Japanese version of the vampire myth. You can't be exposed to sunlight. 
This is all very interesting to me. This is an adaptation of the mythology, so I'm interested in mythology all the time. This is great. So the journey begins. She seems to be just like a mute when it's cloudy. When it's sunny, she turns into a demon. It's a good thing they live in. It's like winter now. It's a good thing about that. Is that the end? Okay. That was the first episode of Demon Slayer. Um, we didn't see any demon slaying. Uh, I'm just kidding. Um, so there was a demon hunter that came in. Tanjiro is clearly going to proceed along that route at some point. He's going to see a master with his sister who's now a demon. Um, and his whole, I guess his whole arc is about redeeming his sister's state, getting her back to being a human. Now this, of course, reminds me immediately of Full Metal Alchemist when uh, you have, he had to turn his brother back from a suit of armor into a person and that was his whole goal. And all the stuff along the way was just the stuff that he ended up getting into because of his goal to turn his brother back into being a human. So I'm not saying they're, I'm not saying they're like influenced by each other or anything like that. I'm just saying we can expect that level of like emotional involvement with Tanjiro and his sister because it's his sister first of all his whole family's dead with Edward and Alphonse their whole family um, was just their mom and, and their dad left and there was not even a an in, he wasn't involved at all in the whole thing until the very end um and and this show so far a couple first of all the things it has going for it the setting very interesting setting to me right off the bat that era just lends itself to great costume, great production design, and they've chosen to set it in the mountains, which means snow. And Japan and snow always have good things going with each other, you know? Like, they have this, like, this particular era, which is when, like, the last bit of mythology and the first bit of technology kind of meet, and they are just at that level where they both can exist at the same time, is the most interesting setting for me if you're picking a historical setting. Because if you go earlier than this, you can't have to any to any kind of technology at all. We did see like the phone cables or maybe power cables in the village. So there is technology in this scenario. As I speculated before, I don't know if there's going to be guns of some kind. Uh, maybe that might be interesting to see at some point down the line. If there's some kind of clash where they have with guns. I haven't read the manga at all, so I have no idea. Um, clearly, there's some level of mythology because we saw demons being mentioned and demons weren't shown as monsters. They were just shown as people who do monstrous things, which is always more interesting to me than people being possessed by monsters or monsters existing external of people in a, in a, like finding them in the woods and just killing them kind of way. This is the most interesting way to do that. Um, character designs. I thought the character designs were solid. Him and his sister look distinct, but related, which is good. The guy who came in, he was wearing a uniform of some kind underneath like a, a robe on the outside. His sword was great. All the art was really good. Um, I noted in the beginning that some of the 3D animation was a little bit janky, and I wonder why they're using that, because Ufotable generally hasn't done that in the past, but maybe it's a carryover from something else, or just a new technology that they wanted to try out. Um, since this manga is so popular, and this is like one of the most popular shows of this season, I'm wondering if that kind of, um, why they chose to do this on this show, as opposed to a different show, which might have a lower budget. Because if you don't know, 3D animation means you don't have to draw every frame of a camera movement, you can render the model and just move the camera and animate that. It makes it easier to do that. What that means is you can get action scenes where the camera is just moving like crazy, which is something that we've come to expect in our Hollywood movies in live action and animation, just because the budgets are so high, they can afford to do that, right? Um, because when you have live action, you can just move the camera. But when you're 2D animating, you have to draw that camera movement and perspective changes with each frame, which makes it pretty hard to do and pretty time consuming to do. So when they do it 3D, that's what they're, that's the benefit of that. And the drawback is you notice sometimes that it's 3D and sometimes it takes you out of it for a second. But I think it's a worthy trade back um, or worthy trade off if we do get that kind of level of fight scene that we saw in something like Land of the Lustrous, for example. Um, if you saw, even in the first episode of that show, there was this crazy fight scene where the camera is just moving and Foss is just jumping all over the place. So if we see something that exciting in this show, then I'm ha I have no problem at all with the use of 3D animation. And even if we don't get something of that level, because that's probably the best use of 3D animation in, in anime so far. So even if we don't get something on that level, if we get something close, or even like 70% of the way there, they could probably justify their way of doing this. Would I have preferred to see it fully 2D animated? I don't know. It feels like they're mixing both and some cuts look really good 
and I suspect that they might be 2D animated or just really good 3D animation and some cuts look a little bit janky. Some of the animation cycles when he was getting up or when he was jumping the over a log at the very beginning and when his sister was struggling when she was held down by that guy, his arm was moving like this but the force was not registered on the rest of his body. It was just moving in relation to what she looked like which was a little bit janky um, and I suspect that that will not be as big a problem going forward because you probably get used to it but solid first episode of what looks to be a promising shonen show that is pretty smart um or it looks it looks like it's trying to be pretty smart because it does establish right off the bat that he's not like some kind of magical superhero he's going to win the fights using resourcefulness which is something that we've seen as a trend in shonen anime so far because look think of midoriya right my hero academia is probably the most popular shonen in the world right now and all the fights that he wins, he tries to win by using his powers in a smart way rather than just punching people. That's not really what he does, even though he does punch people because he has super strength. He is trying to come up with a, an intelligent way to tackle the problem because he may not be the most physically gifted, right? And I hope that's some of what we see from Tanjiro in this episode. Um, and also the dynamic between him and Nezuko, I think is going to be interesting going forward because like Edward and Alphonse, Edward is the one who has the magical powers and Alphonse is the one who's like physically strong. And in this, it looks like Tanjiro is going to be the one that's smart and like does things resourcefully. And Nezuko is going to be the one that has brute force because she's a demon, right? Kind of reversing the dynamic of um, the physically weaker character being the, uh, the magic person because she's a girl. She's younger than him, but she's the one who's physically strong. Um, I hope she talks at some point because if she only growls, this is going to be weird. And I, at first, I suspect that she won't even be using her powers at all because he's going to want to protect her from being a demon at all. But over the course of the series, we might see her use it. Um, I wonder what kind of forces... I'm just, I'm just extremely curious about what's going to happen next, which is really what a first episode should do. So even in just me saying that, this is already a really good first episode. Um, they've gotten me curious about what's going to happen, and they, they haven't done any big blunder that I can think of. So if you're looking for a solid shonen show, which is knows what it is but it's still smart and it has an interesting setting and good art demon slayer is definitely for you check it out episode one came out today episode two is going to come out soon it's being simulcast on crunchyroll so you can watch it that way um thank you for watching expect more live reactions to 2019 anime shows as i try to get a first impression of every show coming out this season and i'll see you in the next video